Is, is quite interesting. My grandparents, my, my grandmother dearest, Elsie and Pop, lived in Gunnedah and they had three kids. And they used to, uh, she would play the piano, oh, Pop, they both used to play the piano. And uh, so the, uh, the earliest thing I can remember is that uh, dearest would make the boys costumes to sing the latest songs from England and uh, the, the boys would act out the song in between wrestling or boxing bouts in, in Ganada. <laughs> and so this is the first I heard because they're obviously a vaudeville type family and that's what they did. And Keith, my, my father, said, yes, he said, I played in the Depression. He said, I played in uh, my violin in the tunnel at Central Railway. He said, just, you know, hoping to get a few bucks for Yes, so, so we all used to, like everybody else, we used to stand around the piano and sing, and Pop would play stop waltzes, which are self-descriptive. It was that time where you would stop in the middle of the waltz and then go on, you see. Yeah. So. And then my sister and I uh, used to sing in all the schools we went to, but uh, we used to get put on the train to go to the Blue Mountains and my grandmother would find someone to look after us and off we'd go up to Katoomba. And my sister would say, what we can do is we can go down the carriages and we can sing, because we, we used to sing in harmony. So we used to sing the bells of St. Mary's and we used to sing uh, Latin songs from the Catholic Church. We, we were basking and we were only about seven, eight, you know, nine. So we used to bus, busk on the trains to the Blue Mountains and I remember Janolan Caves. My sister said, when they get down the bottom, she said, and he's finished what he has to say, because this will be perfect for a song. So we just broke into a harmonised song. Everybody turned around and looked at us. So we were buskers, we were hams, you know. I wonder as I wander out under the sky If Mary bore Jesus our Saviour to die for poor lonely people like you and like I I wonder as I wander out under the sky when Mary bore Jesus 
chores in a cow stall with wise men and shepherds and farmers and all and high in God's heaven the stars light did fall and the promise of angels it then did recall when I was about 14, 15, I had to leave and go to work. And uh, there I met the Sydney Push. I just happened to come across them in this cafe. To me, it was family. It was family. We even had our letters delivered to this, the Arabian cafe, coffee shop. And uh, yeah, John Olson and all those people, they were all contemporaries of my my uh, husband, Bob, Bob Elliott, and uh, it was just a very exciting time. I, I worked and I um, partied and, and heard great conversations of all kinds, you know. <laughs> very, uh, very, uh, what do you call, scandalous sort of music, songs about, uh, yes, Yes, indeed, there were. There were all sorts of folk musicians, and because all the artists would, would link around, but I didn't have any particular. Uh, that's what I sang. We all sang. Uh, yes, and everybody had uh, particular Irish folk songs and all this sort of thing. It was, it was just great. Done that dream. I dream each night You say you love me And you hold me tight But when I awake You're out of sight Oh, darn that dream Darn your lips And darn your eyes you lift me up above the mountain skies Then I tumble out of paradise Oh, darn that dream Darn that one track mind of mine I can't understand why you don't care But just to make a change of mind I'd welcome a nice old nightmare Down that dream And bless it too Without that dream I never would have you but it haunts me and it won't come true Oh, darn that dream It was great socialising with all these students and uh, professors and so forth and that's where I met um, uh, the father of my two sons. I had one child in Sydney. I already had one child from a previous marriage in, in Hobart. And then uh, I had a child in Sydney and then we both went to Hong Kong. And he was in advertising and we had a little band. We had... Uh, the trumpeter was a... Was a um, what do you call it? In the intelligence in the English army. A spook. He was a spook. Played good trumpet. The drummer was a, a private, a, 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 what do you call him, corporal. And uh, my husband, another fellow, played guitar and I sang. And we did a few television things. In. I, I, I was there for four and a half years. I didn't realise I was going to be there so long and I could have learnt Chinese. I regret that. We did little theatre. We did theatre. It was all the... Uh, 
the journalists and the uh, American embassy people and all the expatriates. So that was good fun. My father was a communist and uh, so I was always political and my husband was rather embarrassed by my behaviour. In fact, I think they're all still embarrassed by my behaviour, well, by my attitude, you know. <laughs> Reedy River. Uh, the bloke who produced Bicycle Thieves, it's a famous classical Italian uh, film, very political. He happened to be in Australia and uh, being a communist and I was with the uh, little theatre which was communist and we were doing Reedy River. And uh, so he was asked if he'd like to, to um, interview and audition for the, for the play. And so I thought, well, I'll get in on the dancing and singing for sure. So he asked me if I would read while other people were being auditioned. And then in the end, I ended up with the, with the big role of Mary. Anyway, it was great. We, we did a, I don't know, a couple of years of Reedy River. Great songs. Have you heard it? Have you heard Reedy River? I've heard of it, not. Old Shearer's songs and, um, yes. And a, a thing out of that that I remember, they had some tapes of very early people singing these songs. And they declared when they sang, they didn't just sing it evenly. They would say, as I was out in the, the this morning, da 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 So it was a declaration type of song, which, which I thought is much nicer than the even beat that we have these days. My husband uh, wanted to go to Europe. He was an artist, and uh, although he was in advertising, and that's the job he got when he when he got there. He, he was um, for the uh, Telegraph, I think it was. But he he got a marvelous job, a prestigious job, where he had to uh, do all sorts of exhibitions and uh, all the all the best things, the prestigious things for the for the paper. But um, we broke up there. He left me and went to Italy. And while and then after he'd gone. Uh, that's when I met Davy, um, because I used to go to the the folk clubs and the so forth. And I remember first hearing him play. I think we were just sitting around, and, and I just laughed. I I've never heard anything like it in my life. I just fell about laughing. <laughs> it was so beautiful, um, and so. Uh, he was just a person that was there with a lot of other artists and musicians and uh, he he'd, he'd just arrived one day and moved in and I said you can't move in because I'm much older than you and I have three children and you mustn't do it. He said look I've been arguing with my mother all morning about this and I'm moving in <laughs> so I did. why turn something beautiful down <laughs> so I just accepted it. Where was I living in London then? Um, Ladbrook Grove, I think. I got a job in a laundrette in Blenheim Crescent, which was off Portobello Road. So I became part of the market. And I, it was such a big upstairs that all the uh, artists and poets and writers and so forth, and because there was no residential thing around me, they would quite often all come to the swinging laundrette where we'd take it and we'd, it was just absolutely wonderful. The boys loved it. It was terribly exciting. You can imagine musicians from all over the world and poets and it was just great. So we had a swinging laundrette for about three and a half years because I was downstairs working or I was upstairs. It was a perfect job for a mum with three children. And uh, my job was to do the laundry downstairs in the laundrette. No, they would simply use this big area upstairs because it was so vast. To uh, because sometimes we they had uh, church crypts that they used to use, and then sometimes you wouldn't have the church crypts, so they'd all come up to the laundrette.
remember once there was Davy and another bloke with saxophone were playing in the in the laundrette with the lights on downstairs. They were playing and two two bobbies came along and they were looking in and I opened the door and I said, is there anything wrong? And they said, no, we just can't hear it. I said, would you like to come in? And they said, oh, we'd love to. So they came in and they sat quietly and listened to Davy and, and uh, this other fellow, his name I can't remember, but he was the most wonderful saxophone player. When I left here, the music that the Push were listening to was black music from the South, Alan Lomax's uh, stuff that he'd got together. That's what we were, apart from all, all the other Spanish and you know classical music and so forth, the black music from from the uh, from America, Led Belly and all those people. They were the people that that we were most excited about, and we were quite surprised when we went to England that they didn't have, they hadn't been listening to that stuff. They did later on. But, um, yeah, that's... That. And then when I went to Hong Kong, uh, we had a bass player, and I'm, again, I can't remember his name, he's a famous uh, jazz musician from England now, and he, he introduced us to, uh, to uh, all the famous Amer black American, uh, um, Mars Davis and all this sort of thing, and um, Billie Holiday, I'd never heard her before. Uh, so with the, we got all that stuff in, in Hong Kong and continued listening to it. And then the African musicians were coming over from Africa and they were playing some wonderful stuff. So it was a mixture, and then with Davy, Davy of course is uh, was much loved by the, uh, the, the visiting farmer from uh, America, they would use him but also all the folk people, because Davy is um, half West Indian, half Scots. So, uh, and why I say that is because you can hear it in his music. You can hear it, and he he just he rang me up yesterday and sang a couple of little Gaelic songs to me, which was sort of funny, silly little songs, you know, beautiful. Just another homesick child Tired of running wild Ready to stand trial and move on Though I'm guilty in your sight Have mercy tonight I can't make it through this fire alone All the long, long night don't make it easy Keep me working till I work it all out. Please shine your light on me. Keep me from the shadow of your doubts. Just keep me from the shadow of your doubts. As I try to make some sense of this world I'm up against And I know my best defense is your love When the struggle gets insane And the lesson's full of pain Keep me calling out your name of love All the long, long night don't make it easy Keep me working till I work it all out. Please shine your light on me. Keep me from the shadow of your doubts. Just keep me from the shadow of your doubts. Well, I whisper in the dark. From the bottom of my heart And I'm hoping for one star to shine 
I was shot from mighty high I'm reaching to the sky Till you opened up my eyes So blind Oh, the long, long night to make it easy Keep me working Till I work it all out No, please Shine your light on me Keep me from The shadow of your doubt Just keep me from The shadow of your doubt I wanted to always come back to Australia, but I couldn't bear to take the boys so far away from their father, who was in Italy. So he, they went backwards and forwards constantly between us. And then finally, I, and Mum was not not well. She was dying, and so I finally said, I have to go. And by that time, the boys were all in 17, 18, 20 something or so. I, so I came, hoping that they would come too. I was so relieved to come back to Australia. I was looked after by the English government and the people I met in, in England were just wonderful. But I really, really wanted to come back. And as soon as I came back, I got a little job and I started busking. I went down on the Penrith train to Penrith and I thought I'll do the right thing. So I went to the council and I said, look, I'd like to, I just had the, t the guitar here. I said, I'd just like to play it somewhere. Where, where can I play that will be okay? She said, it's best if you write us a letter, dear. So I said, right. So then I went down to the police station and I said, look, the council have said write a letter. And there was this huge policeman sitting behind the desk and he said, ah, a troubadour. And I said, yes. And I told him the council said, right, and he said, what do you play? I said, would you like to hear something? He said, okay. So I played him a song and there's all the policemen walking backwards and forwards going, <laughs> looking, what's this, what's this? He said, you're a coloratura soprano. I said, am I? I didn't know that. He said, no, the best thing, he said, if the police are concerned about the footpaths uh, and the rights of way, he said, and the arcades of the shops will just ask the shops and they'll say yes or no. So I said, what about the big supermarket with the, the trees and the seats around them? And he said, that's fine, fine. So off I went and uh, I asked him to turn the music down you know, all the shops have got music. And I don't think they'd ever had buskers in Penrith before because everybody looked... All the Mediterranean people, the old couples, they just sat down. They thought it was completely reasonable that somebody should sing in the street. And the young people were looking at me as much as to say, I could do that. And I was thinking, they can too. <laughs> and they asked me to play some raunchy, you know, <laughs> modern songs, which of course I couldn't play. So yes, that was the... I played down in the train and then I played in the train going back home. From then on, I, yes, I played around the Blue Mountains. And then I came up here. I came up here at 79. Mum died and I came up here. My sister was up here. And uh, I started busking. I, the, I played at the Oceanic. And I thought, this is going to be very frightening. These fishermen are going to eat me for breakfast. And they loved it, and they knew the words. And they were just great audience. Terrific. Well, all I had, all I could get, because I'm probably a bit lazy, uh, was uh, fake books, uh, with have, which have the, the words and the, and the tunes. So... Uh, I, and I realised that songs that I'd never fancied as a young person, I thought, but they're, they're good words, it's nice music progression. So I just learned them and changed them a bit. And, uh, yeah, I'd never sung them before. I was singing Lead Belly songs. In fact, somebody said to me once in England, he said, you sing like a man with a beard, June. <laughs>
do because <laughs> Burl Ives and all these people. So, uh, so I learned all these songs out of these fake books. Uh, I used to sing more folk songs than I sing now. Uh, I just loved doing it. And then I started getting jobs at Five Stars for playing for diners and things like that. Oh, I've, I've played in just about every single Five Star on the coast here. Resorts. Oh yes, that's resorts. And um, I had a nice uh, thing with the Hannafords. Have you heard of Hannafords uh, Magic? Uh, yes, I played for them for a while. I came straight here because my sister was here, so I, I moved up here. And I loved it so much. I had been in the tropics as a child in Borneo and stuff, so I knew about, I knew how beautiful, exciting tropical rainforests are, but um, this was, everything grows so fast, I was just very excited about all the animals and birds and, and also Karanda has got a lot of artists, so we more or less were relaxed. I was feeling very relaxed in the company. Well, then it really was the markets were really artists sitting down making things in front of you. So it was a very, they're all still here, most of them, these artists, but they're, they're all at the Chamber of Commerce now, doing rather well for themselves. But uh, yeah, for everything, musicians, potters, writers. Oh, and change, change so that it became more sort of commercial, more, Indonesian stuff than, than um, you know, artists just coming here and doing their own their own stuff, and then and then we started to do the amphitheater, which was very exciting. The whole of the community were involved. Everybody from the little kids with their little insect wings and their makeup, and the teenagers were all there, and the uh, Yes, everybody was involved, black and white. We were all doing our stuff and we were all learning from each other and socialising with each other. And we'd get at least one to two um, uh, musicals written by locals where everybody was involved. So to me that was terribly exciting, very good for us. When the Jabber guy people were involved, uh, that he was very knowledgeable about how, how to get people to write their own words to, to a character and uh, so we had their help but uh, yes, so it, it, was, it was wonderful and that's what I would like to see again so that was the, the most exciting thing. The next exciting thing would be a swimming pool. I want a swimming pool and I'll go every day. We all live in Karanda, life is a lottery And we are all the winners, but we're just too blind to see and We're all looking for the power, and we're all looking for the plan I just can't keep from crying sometimes well, I just can't keep from crying sometimes When my heart's full of sorrow my eyes are filled with tears I just can't keep from crying Sometimes I tell you we've got the power The power is in the land The power is all around us We just gotta give it a hand But we're all looking for the money And how to keep each other down I just can't keep from crying Sometimes Oh, we haven't got a kiddies playground Oh, we haven't got a swimming pool And everybody's coming to see us And all we've got is a shopping mall We're knocking on the council's door But they're deaf and blind inside I just can't keep from crying sometimes Well, I just can't keep from crying sometimes when my heart's full of sorrow, my eyes are filled with tears, I just can't keep from crying sometimes. Murray's 
the sweetness, the brilliance of <laughs> when Groovy uh, uh, used to play accompany me, and he'd say, "Where? Uh, what? Oh, right. He just didn't have to worry. He just knew where to go and what to do and how to feel, and just delightful. Just yes." Murray's, there's so many musicians in Karanda. So many. Seeing as I just want to hear more of them, I have to go out and. Because they're, they're very kind, they all know my name and they all say, Oh, Junior. And the little ones will say, You play guitar, I know. <laughs> it's so sweet. Yes, I played at the markets for about 10, 15 years and loved it. I loved it. It's not a trapped audience, that people can either stay and listen for a bit or they can just pass by. That's what I like about it. it I'm not uh, wanting to grab people and hold them. What I can't understand is why I haven't been singing with other people, because I love singing with other people. Trios. It's usually sax and, uh, and bass, yes. Okay. And then I was very lucky that Rudy uh, Holmberger decided that he, he was doing a, a CD and he said, if you like, we'll do, in the morning we'll do a CD for you and in the afternoon we'll do a CD for me. My heart is sad and lonely For you I sigh, for you dear only you see me I'm all for you body and soul I spend my days in longing and wondering why it's me you're wronging I tell you I mean it I'm all for you body and soul can't believe it, it's hard to deceive it, you turned away from romance, are you pretending, or is this the ending, unless I could have one more chance to prove dear, my life a hell you're making, you know I'm yours for just a taking I would gladly surrender myself to you I spend my days in longing and wondering why it's me you're wronging I tell you what I mean it I'm all for you My father did that. He stayed at home a lot. My, I've got two sons who also stay at home a lot and make things and music and one does domes and paints and stuff. They're all fine, but they're nowhere near me. They're down in New South Wales or, or Rome or England, America. And uh, so I know they're all okay, but I miss out on grandchildren and children. I never thought that would happen to me. I always thought I'd be surrounded by family. and They're all okay. you just got to be very understanding as you get older. And I've got photographs. got a lot of photographs, all right? <laughs> my body's at home, but my heart's in the wind. And the clouds and the lines on a new front page shine. My tears are salt water and the moon's full and high And I know Joe Conrad would be proud of me Many before me been called by the sea To be up in the crow's nest Singing by saying Shiver me timbers Let's all sail away 
when my husband, the one, I had two boys, uh, and we went to Hong Kong. The three boys, and 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 us, and the wonderful music and poetry, and he used to bring this stuff home, spend all his money on wonderful music from Gregorian chants to whatever. They were the happiest times in Hong Kong with all the journalists coming from all over the world and the, but, and the great conversations and uh, great music. Yes, they, they were the happiest times. They would come to our place because we had three kids and so it was easier for everybody to come to us. It was magic. I'd known June um, for many years as a uh, as a performer in the corporate world. She um, is celebrated in the corporate world um, as a soloist, but also um, being backed by all our top jazz musicians, working through resorts um, and in uh, the very best of hotels, etc. Behind closed doors, uh, the choice of um, the discerning. Uh, she also worked uh, for a number of years and still does at Flames of the Forest where uh, they do the most spectacular forest dinner in Port Douglas and uh, all the elite go there, movie stars, rock stars and they celebrate June Graham so it's a wonderful thing and I'm very glad to have played along with her. You'd be so easy to love, so easy to idolize all others are bound. So was the yearning for. So swell to keep those home fires burning for. We'd be so grand at the game, so carefree. And gentle that it does seem a shame that you can't see that your future's with me cause you'd be home so easy you'd be so easy to love so Above. So was the yearning for So swell to keep those home fires burning for We'd be so grand at the game So carefree and gentle that it does seem a shame that you can't see that your future's with me cause you'd be home so easy to love you'd be home so easy to Love